Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 597. Three more to go to the 600 marker. Um, that should have been inside voice. Okay, forget that. And the topic today is toxic masculinity. Is there a better choice? And obviously there's going to be an answer yes, but I want to break it down a bit because for a lot of people, they don't know this stuff. Before I jump into that, let me choose myself and then get into the topic. I'm sorry to warm up the weekend broadcast, so hence the casual attire and the <laughs> slower start. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what inspired these talks I've done for over two years now, particularly daily for the last most of that. For the last most of that? Yeah, something like that called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart, or Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today is kind of a part three in a way, because I talked about how men are screwed um, on 595, 596. This is 597, which is actually going to take, in a way, the bull by the horns. I'm talking about toxic masculinity and other choices. Because for some, and I did cover that sort of kind of in the last two broadcasts, but I want to give you more fuel, more resources and more ability to change if you're one of the men who's dealing with this. Now I'm going to speak to men and to women and women who know men because we're all in the conversation because I might drop some stuff about toxic femininity as well just to be spicy. So thanks for being with me. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this live feel free to share it out. This is Facebook Live first that goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube and wondering who I'm talking to it's people who've commented during my Facebook Live. Now you know. And I'll give the links at the back end of how to find all of those. So, today's episode, number 597, is toxic masculinity. Is there a better choice? And yes, of course, there is. But I'm not just going to say there is because that's like, okay, done, sign off, see you later. I want to explain some things. Because for some people out there, not you, of course, but people you might know, they're stuck in this thing about toxic masculinity without any um, ability to find their way out or to know if they're even doing it. So let me just give you some framing. Um, the epitome, if that's the right word, of toxic masculinity was the Harvey Weinstein situation that was blown up in the news. It was, it was ba- and the thing is it's interesting because when it's the first big one, because there are many that came after that, it's the one that gets the most attention. Even though what he did on the scale of toxic masculinity was not right at the top, it was certainly, or right bottom, depending how you look at it, the le- wasn't the most toxic. It was in the middle of the spectrum because it was um, Assad, I think is his name. The guy who was the um, gymnastics coach at that school back east. And it's happening now out here. Another school out here is doing it with gymnastic coaches. Apparently it's a thing going on. When he basically had sexually assaulted over 200 girls. He's now in jail. That was a court case that was on six months ago, five months ago. If you're looking at on the scale of worseness, He's, worse, he's further up the scale of, of toxicity than Harvey Weinstein. Not to excuse him. But what I'm saying is there's a variety on that spectrum. And so toxic masculinity, generally speaking, as a reference point, and I'm using my own filters, not what I've seen documented on some website somewhere, is toxic masculinity is the um, misuse of male ego and male power to inflict pain or suffering on somebody else. That's a very succinct and maybe not the most accurate one, but that feels very accurate to me because it happens not just about sexual, it's about control, abuse, and um, distress caused by men who don't know to be themselves. And that's where I want to get to this piece. I want to unpack this a little bit because the toxicity has more than one root, I believe, more than one source. But also what we can do about it has more than one path as well. And I may have to drop in my own lifestyle, my own life journey in this as well, because it seems to be coming up the last two broadcasts as well. So first of all, a lot of people learn behavior, and I'm using people generally speaking, because we all do this, from two main sources, from society as a whole, and from our family in particular. That's the main two places. There are other places as well. But the main two places we learn behavior and other way to do things is from our parents and siblings and relatives and from the society as a whole. So when we're young, we get imprinted by what happens at home with our families. 
which is the whole thing about conversations about how relationship choices are so messed up because we use our parental model as the imprint that we don't even know we're doing subconsciously. That I talked about before, it's in my book, it's in my coaching. If you want to find out more about that, reach out to me. I'll tell you all about that separately. But what's also part of the challenge is that we learn by watching the way that parents act, and particularly how the male partners act if we're boys. We learn how to copy or how to reject. I rejected what was happening with my dad, the way my dad was. I didn't copy him necessarily. Now, he wasn't and isn't. I mean, he's 92 now, but he's still alive. But back then, when I was younger, he wasn't what I would describe as toxic masculinity. He was just very rigid, controlled, contained. I mean, come on. Straight, white, Jewish, English man. <laughs> That's kind of constrained. That's what he was. So I didn't want to be that way. I didn't know it to be anything different, but I wanted to be something separate. And that's what led me to the path, and I may get to that later on. But what I'm very aware of is there are the fact people who, are, there are people, so men and women, or should I say boys and girls, raising families where there's a lot of toxicity in there. So they get imprinted with behavior that may not be the healthiest or most respected. And society, as I mentioned, doesn't always advise the best way of being especially with the way the ads are run and the pharmaceutical companies promote themselves and the TV shows and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. There's so much imprinting that we get from the environment we live in, which a lot of it comes through the media sources, so TV and radio and movies, that we may not necessarily learn the right way of being. So I'm not saying that's the exact path it comes through, but that's a couple of the sources I believe that some of the toxicity comes through and the... Um, less than ideal way of presenting and being in a relationship with people and also how this toxic masculinity shows up. And yes, toxic femininity too. Because it always comes out of reactivity. And I've talked about that yesterday, I believe. And this is the thing with what the work is about. First of all, there's a lesser choice, which is what I chose before, which is the nice guy path, which was, which was basically a beta male or a feminine man or any assortment of those titles. It was all in there. And it meant that my relationship choices were choosing to date very powerful women, or I should say very masculine women. Reverse polarity in that sense. Now, in some relationships, that's normal and it's okay. In the relationship I was in, it was reversed. I knew that because I was out of alignment. I didn't know what I was supposed to be, but I was being in the wrong place at the time. That wasn't a solution to toxic masculinity. It was actually just another choice of limited behavior. I believe... Do I? <laughs> I'm about to say something. Do I believe this? Let me put it on the table first and then say if I believe it or not. Toxic, the way out of toxic masculinity, um, there's a few, I don't say agreements, there's a few facts that need to become owned by the people who are dealing with this. So a man who's, in it, who's attempting to avoid or not be imprinted with toxic masculinity, first of all, going to be willing to be vulnerable. Because by being vulnerable, you're willing to listen, you're willing to feel, and willing to receive. So I said masculinity doesn't do any of that. It's a taking, controlling, pushing, enforcing energy. So vulnerability is the opposite of that in a lot of ways. So being vulnerable is a part of it. Secondly, secondly is treating other people with respect. I said people, not just men, not just women. People in general, everybody with respect. And this, this needs to come from a true place, not just saying I'll open the door for them and be nice to them and say hi but it'll be a facade. I'm talking about how to get really to get that place. I'm realizing there's a whole bunch of stuff that's brewing about what, what would be keys to exiting, avoiding, and, and being away from toxic masculinity. Because there is a better way of living life. And the best way of living life, I believe, is to be in a place of authenticity. And most toxic masculinity is not based on authenticity. It's learned behavior, it's imprinted behavior, and it's a way of avoiding personal feelings and personal um, hmm, the word trust came up self-trust and I'm not providing the solution to everything so just be clear this is not saying this is the answer to toxic masculinity I'm just speaking to some of the ways that are better than or better than that are more whole than that way which again is being authentic being vulnerable being willing to get help because most toxic masculinity is is based in people who are so. Um, I'm gonna say this, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> are so contained in a sense of righteousness that they think there's the only way to be, that there's no no resource for them to come out to offer help and support. 
and watching what's going on now even with um he's actually got a little bit disgusted by it by um uh what's his name um louis ck who's doing a tour right now and is is you know like he's just it, it, it the thing about toxic masculinity and this whole me too conversation is there isn't a fixed time where if you just hide out for six months or six weeks or six days you say okay i'm free now i can go do what i want to do until the patterns changed until the um Mm, what is that piece going to be until the judgments and the guilt and the um, healing has happened it ain't over and so and it's interesting how some of these men who have been removed from positions of authority from their careers or from their jobs because of the toxic masculinity have been basically just looking helpless because they don't know what to do differently and so they're in a place where they're going okay I, I, I understand can I go back to work now it's like no because they haven't changed. And this is the challenge with toxic masculinity for many people, is they think that they can just outlast it, which is not gonna happen. The reality is change is coming, yes. The reality is that the reaction of and the upsurge of the Me Too conversation, a lot of women who are stepping into that place, is not the solution either. Sorry, it's not the solution either. It's part of the journey to get to the solution. And I wanna be really clear about this. Where we're headed, where we're going as a culture, I believe, is a place where we're gonna find balance because right now it's a pendulum swing energetically. And women are finding their voice, thank God. But at the same time, the women are finding their voice as a reaction to men. Now the Women's March was today, this third annual Women's March. I love it, I'm appreciative of all the women doing it and stepping up and being honored and respected, I absolutely agree. At the same time, what else can we do that creates a solution to that we don't need the Women's March anymore? The Women's March is, is a statement, declaration, an intention, and it's a lot of voices being raised. Thank God for women's voices being raised. At the same time, it isn't the solution. It's a symptom of what can happen. It's a symptom of the problem, and it's a um, messenger of the solution. The change is going to be when we get to equality, real equality. I don't mean financial equality only. I mean respect equality. I mean a place where we get to a place where men and women recognize the fact that we're not different in the sense that we're not but one above, one less or anything else. We're equal, but we're different. And the sense that men and women and judging differences less than is where the mistake's been made by many, many men over many, many years. Recognizing the differences are a respectful place and honoring places where we can make some changes. And I'm realizing I'm saying this, there's, there's <laughs> maybe there's a gen, an agenda brewing or a manifesto coming, I'm not sure which, but there's something brewing that this, this is leading into and it's not clear yet, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. But these talks I've done, these last these, these three talks from, um, this is what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which is 590, 590, 596, 597, are leading me to a new place and in messaging and also perhaps in a, in a communication because I feel like it's something to be talked about. There's, sorry, I'm watching, I'm watching something sort of formulate and I, and I don't have words on it yet. All right, let me, let me try and wrap this up because I need to put some thought down on paper on this. We're in a, pl we're in a place of flux. In a place, uh, we're in a place of change. And in some parts of the culture, it hasn't moved an inch. The needle hasn't moved a speck. But for a lot of us, we're waking up. And a lot of us have been awake for a while, seeing other people waking up, it's like, great, we're not alone anymore. Because that's been going on for a while too. What I'm feeling more than anything else is a sense of hope and a sense of excitement that there may be more people who are willing to say, let's change the system. Because my hand's raised for that. So I, I am in agreement with the Women's March, the women that did that and who are doing it today. But I'm also aware that we need to do more than that. So I'm in for the conversation of how we make the change to shift from toxic masculinity or how we eliminate toxic masculinity once and for all. Because the frustration of me, okay, this is my frustration. <laughs> I've talked a lot in the last two years of my talks about the feminine and the masculine. And when you hijack the word masculine and put toxic on the front, I have an issue with that because it's not toxic masculinity. It's toxic machismo. In fact, I'm gonna talk about that more. Toxic machismo is the issue. It isn't about toxic masculinity because masculinity is not toxic. 
it's the machismo it's the ego driven male ego um the ma ego driven male ego <laughs> it's the ego driven male machismo that macho ego structure that is what's that is toxicity is toxic all the way through i need to change the title okay so it's toxic macho to toxic machoism that is what really is up for us to talk about so let me be tomorrow's talk because the masculine heart the true masculine heart is the warrior spirit is not toxic it is not ego driven it is heart driven spirit led and aligned to a true cause and that's what i believe in more than anything else that's what i've been working on directly for the last 11 12 years 11 years so i'm glad that piece showed up i was wondering what's sitting with that so that's why i've been issue for the last few days talking about toxic masculinity because it's not masculinity it's toxic machismo all right I'm glad I got that out of my chest. <laughs> of my chest. Um, I think I've given you some thoughts, some ideas, considerations. If you want to share this with people who maybe get some benefit from this, please do so. I'm my head's spinning. Sorry, I'm I'm going through some. I definitely need to make some notes. I'm going to do some writing after this. Thank you for being with me. <laughs> Thanks for watching my process as I shared this today. Um, I do invite you to. Oh, hi, Karen. Nice seeing you broadcast. You agree? Men are become men are becoming butt hurt. Men are becoming butt hurt that masculinity is under attack. It isn't. Toxic machismo is. Thank you for coining that term. Thank you. I'm glad you agree. Yes, I'm glad you glad you agree with me. And yes, it is challenging for me because I believe in the masculine. Absolutely. I mean, I talk about these are called messages from the masculine. Not not toxic messages from the masculine. These are my daily talks for the last two and a half years. You can't take my word away from me. <laughs> but I'm speaking to this as a as a point of view that we are shifting the conversation. Thank you, Karen, for agreement. I appreciate having the feminine speaking into that. Um, <laughs> more to come definitely so if you haven't seen my broadcast before by the way this is my daily Facebook live I do on, on Facebook of course my personal page then goes into my person, business page for the archives then onto YouTube channel and then onto my podcast I'll give you the links for those so you know where to find me and by the way I am a relationship um, attraction expert it's my business if you're looking for love in all the wrong places you can reach out to me for help um, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session for that um, what else do you want to talk about I'll do for now. I'm not gonna put any links otherwise. It's a weekend broadcast. A bit. It was supposed to be lighthearted, but it went deeper. So I'm glad I got some new stuff. So yes, toxic machismo. Thank you for that, Karen. Putting it in words, it sits better in my head now. I see it in print, as it were. So, um, daily talks at 5 p.m. Pacific time on um, my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I hope you join me when I do my broadcast. If you can't catch me live, my replays are stored on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. In addition, I put them onto YouTube for those people who don't do Facebook that often. Some people do. They're weird that way. Not weird, just different. Um, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And on that, ch on my channel, there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine where all of these live. You can watch all of those there. Thirdly, I have a, a podcast which I've named Messages for the Masculine on iTunes, which right now is just my um, archived audio versions of my Facebook Lives. So you can catch a bunch of them there if you want to download them and listen to them. And you can subscribe to that, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and follow me on Facebook. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, um, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Then we'll talk more about that toxic machismo. It's time we change it. Thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow for some other interesting stuff, maybe and more of the same. This is this is day three of this theme. We're not done yet. So I appreciate you being here and thanks for the input and conversation and for the love and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.